I'm honored to have the opportunity to present another series to the alumni of Chappelle's and Midrash Rachel in challenging topics in Avodah Hashem. The one I choose now, I don't choose lightly, because it really is the topic of how to deal with adversity, how to deal with pain. It's not the lightest and most pleasant of topics, and I try to keep things light and fun usually, but I'm also very sensitive to the fact in my own life, in discussing the lives of current students and discussing with so many of you alumni out there, that we all go through pain. And that's an experience which is challenging in and of itself, challenging our inner strength, challenging our belief system. And it gets us oftentimes to question and to get angry. Why is it that I have to go through pain in my life? What is Hashem telling me? What am I supposed to do about it? Let's first explore the fact that everybody goes through pain in one way or another. Rabbi Sol Salanter said that when a little boy cries when his toy boat goes down in the lake when he was playing with it, he's feeling the same pain as a wealthy man who had a boat and his boat went down. Pain is indeed sometimes relative. So even though a person can sometimes look at someone else's pain and say, that's pain, right? This person is upset that their kid didn't get into a certain top school my kids got thrown out of the schools that take anyone. Nonetheless, that person is also experiencing pain. And pain brings with it those same existential questions, the same demoralization that a person feels that weakens them in their avodah Hashem, that weakens them in their day-to-day -day life, in their relationships. A person at some point in their life is probably going to make the following cheshbon. They're going to think, we were told that HaKadosh Baruch who created the world to give. Again, I heard from Rabbi Yonis and David Shlita, he said the Ramban says that's not the be-all and end-all of why Hashem created the world. That's something we can't know because that has to do with that has to do with Hashem's essence, which we can't know. But that's what he revealed to us. It says until him, Olam chesed ibona, the world is an act of giving. Ramchal phrases it, Miteva hatov lehetiv, the nature of one who is good is to do good, and this world is the ultimate good. We also know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is kol yacho. He can do everything. Omnipotent, if you want a big word. So at some point, a person thinks, wait a second. If Hashem created this to do good for us, and Hashem can do anything, why is it if I do a customer satisfaction survey of people on this world, he's not going to get great ratings? If I ask people, are you entirely happy with the life Hashem gave you? Most will say no. If I say, do you have any suggestions for things Hashem could change to make your life better? Most people will need more pieces of paper in order to write out all their ideas and requests. And that causes a lot of people to go, be, to be, go around with anger inside. Anger at Hashem, dismay, lack of understanding as to what the point of this exercise can be. And because it's something that's there in every point of life, we're going to try to learn a very important source in at least guiding us through it if not being able to totally understand it. The Nesiva Shalom is a sefer written by the previous Slonim Rebbe. Many of you have learned pieces of it in yeshiva, heard it quoted all the time. He has a volume on basics of Jewish faith, he has a volume on the Moadim, and he has the set on the Chumash. This book are the letters of the Nesiva Shalom, letters that he wrote to Talmidim, to Hasidim. One letter was written to somebody who he describes as Hayoshev Bachoshech Ve'en Nogalo, a person who is sitting in darkness and has no light. One of his students, we felt, was in a very low state of despair, of depression, because of difficulties that he went through in many ways. This letter was addressed to him. I want to learn that letter with you in the upcoming sessions. I did it once in Midrash Rachel during the three weeks because in many ways, when we talk about Golos, when we talk about exile, there's a national Golos for the Jewish people when we're exiled from our land, we're exiled among other nations, but there's also personal Golos. There's also the extent, the sense that I'm sitting in darkness. I don't see the light of Hashem. I don't see the light of Torah. It's hard for me. I'm in the incomprehensible. What do I do in that Golos? Because, as the Svasemis points out, the word golos is really from the Hebrew word legalot, to reveal. What is that supposed to reveal to me? What is it supposed to bring out in me? What's the appropriate reaction? And how do I deal with the inappropriate reactions? 
That's what we're going to try to look at. It's a very challenging topic to take on, but I don't want you, our alumni, to feel that we ignore that. That's part of life, and the Torah speaks to every aspect in life. And hopefully we're going to try to learn that together. I wish, hopefully, that nobody has pain, that any pain that maybe is something comprehensible and helpful and fruitful, like pangs of labor that give birth to something. Nonetheless, all the brachas and all the hopes also have to deal with the reality, and the Torah teaches us about Golas, just as it teaches us with Geula. Wishing you a life of simcha and understanding, and the ability to be able to deal with adversity if Chas it comes our way.